Hi there, welcome to this new build series and I'm really excited about this next one. This is a 49 inch wingspan Diamond Demon. Now this is a really great looking vintage model from the 1930s. In fact it's a design that was done by Jerry Stoloff, I hope I pronounced that correctly, in I believe 1937 and it was powered by an Olsen and Rice uh, 23 and that's a spark ignition engine and as soon as he had got this running he won some national championships and it flew really really nice. Now this plane was then kitted out by the Ridge Bay Company in 1939. You can see this advert here for, uh, for the kit and to be honest the image is a little bit disappointing on this because it doesn't really do the plane justice. Now it's called the Diamond Demon and it's because it's got a fantastic diamond shaped fuselage and we'll have a look at the plans a little bit closer in a minute. Now I'm going to be using plans which I got from uh, Ben Buckle in the UK and he's great plan service, really good very reasonable priced, very good quick delivery service. So that's what we're going to be using for this build and as I said we'll have a look at the plans in a minute but they're, they're really good plans, lots of detail. There's still a little bit that it leads to the imagination and we have to work out exactly what's going on. But you know this is a really old design so it's great that uh, people like Ben Buckle are still producing these plans for us. Now there are copies of other versions of, of the Diamond Demon plans on Outer Zone if you want to have a look at that and download those but these I, I chose to use these because of the detail that they had on them. Now I'm going to be <laughs> making this with a spark ignition engine as well which is going to present some real challenges because this originally will have been a, a free flight design so it wouldn't have had any radio gear any radio control and it had a fairly small fuel tank and these free flight planes they had a very short run on the engine and they would climb almost vertically sometimes to get as much height as they could and so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be fitting this out with a Phantom 19 spark ignition engine and if you want to see more of this engine it's a lovely running engine have a look in the description below this video and there'll be a link to where I'm, I'm running it in the test stand but a Bantam 19 it's not as powerful as the Olsen 23 but hopefully it will be powerful enough because as I said the old free flight designs they used to climb as high as they could as rapidly as they could. Hopefully this slightly smaller engine, I mean we're still talking about a 3cc engine or thereabouts, hopefully this engine will give us a little bit more sedate flight and I'm going to put a fuel tank in it that will give us a little bit longer run than perhaps you'd have expected with the old vintage free flights. But I'm also going to be putting radio control gear in this. It's going to be two channel, it's going to be the elevator and the rudder. So it's kind of radio assist, just to keep it within the confines of the airfield. Now that presents challenges because I'm not only adding a fuel tank, I'm not going to use the integral tank that came with this Bantam 19. So I'm going to be including a fuel tank, I've got the spark ignition system and I've got the radio gear. So I'm going to need to really think ahead of, on this and carefully, not only about how I get everything in, but how I try and get a little bit of separation between the ignition equipment and the radio equipment so there's no interference. Now originally when I got these plans, I've had these plans <clears throat> on the wall for a few months and I've been looking at them. Whenever I'm doing a build I've always got the next build or what I'm thinking is the next build on the wall and I've been looking at these for quite a while before I, I've moved them around to here for this build. Now 
Originally, I was thinking of doing it as just a, a simple diesel, and I've got a, a couple of diesel engines that I had lined up to put in this. Probably, I was going to use a one and a half cc snipe, but I've decided it would be great to do this as a spark ignition. As I said, there's some challenges, and if we can't get it all in, if there's a problem, then no big deal. I can then revert to a diesel, but I really, really want to try and get this Bantam running in the uh, in this lovely 49 inch wingspan Diamond Demon. So now let's take a look at the plans. Well, as I said, a great set of plans from Ben Buckle with lots and lots of detail. And it's really interesting to see how this 1930s plane is built because it's a really old style of building. The wings, very simple, no ailerons and a, quite a large dihedral. We've got just a single half inch spar on the bottom of the wing, nothing on the, on the top. So quite a flexible wing. We've got a fuselage, we've got this lovely diamond shaped fuselage which you probably can't appreciate from the plans but hopefully you'll see that developing in the next series of videos. Now the fuselage itself is actually based on what they call a crutch design where basically you have a crutch shape that forms the main structure of the fuselage and then you've got formers top and bottom to give it that shape to give it that diamond shape. Now if we have a look at the build uh, steps here, which are really, really useful, we can see that we've got the layout of how the sequence it should be built, which is really helpful. And we build this crutch first, and we've got these cross members, which will correspond to the formers that go down the fuselage. I spent a long time looking at this and working out exactly how we're going to do this build. We've also got some um, uh, beach bearers at the front for the engine which are going to be glued and pegged into place. And I've started to do some of the preparation for this and we'll have a look at uh, what I've done so far and then we'll, uh, we'll get on and start to build this fuselage. I'm really excited about this build. I've started to pull together some of the pieces I need to make up that central crutch which forms the basis or the, the, the main bit of the, uh, of the fuselage, the main supporting piece of the fuselage. And that's what I'm hoping to get done in this video, to get that completed. And it's a fairly simple process. It's got the two sides which are made up of half inch by 316 timber. And that is a composite of spruce at the front and medium balsa at the back. And I've just spliced that in and epoxied that joint. And I'll show you how I did that, how I glued that, just to make sure I get this nice and straight. Have a look at this. Well, to glue this, I'm going to be using epoxy and um, that's just because it's a little bit gap filling and it will fill any imperfections of my, uh, my cuts, although the, the cuts don't look too bad to be honest. Now I'm going to put epoxy on these, I'm putting them on plastic which I'm going to then lap up the sides and you can see here I've clamped beach engine bearers, uh, I mean they can be any size really, just something nice and straight either side and I put some bits of spruce which is the same timber as this this piece here so it's the same thickness and I've just slotted those into there and then clamped those up the these pieces of spruce are just to stop it sort of closing in a little bit tighter at the top and making sure that this is pushed right down to the bottom on the on the workbench so if we then turn it over we can see that that is nice and flat and we'll get a nice straight joint. Well having got these two sides now finished I've cut a couple of engine bearers and the engine bearers go on the inside at the front here but we need to space them out to get that distance right for the engine to sit in and the way it recommends on the plans is just using some balsa so we have a balsa filler between 
the engine bearers like uh, like that. Now obviously you can use a different size balsa depending upon what engine you're going to use. I've also cut the spacers for the fuselage to space this central cabin section here which is actually parallel sided. So I'm going to do that bit first and then once that's done I will pull in this rear section. There's a couple of other things just to say about this uh, modifications, things I'm changing slightly so that we can get this spark ignition engine in here and the tank. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mock this up at the moment, I'm not going to glue it and I'll just quickly talk you through it. This is how it's shown on the plans with the exception of the engine bearers. On the plans it shows the engine bearers half inch by half inch, so square. I've actually kept the half inch deep to conform to the sides of the crutch but I've actually put narrower beach in, this is 3 8 Having half inch wide was just overkill, added extra weight, it wasn't necessary for the spacing, could have done away with the balsa but it, it, the plans showed this balsa in there and it's an opportunity to, to lighten the front a little bit so I've done that. Now this is the correct spacing of the fuselage as shown on the plans and this gives me just the right spacing now with this 1 8 balsa in here for this bantam to sit on the front. I've got the cross pieces in which form the central section of the fuselage cabin, these parallel sides. Now as I said earlier I want to put in a fuel tank, this is a 2 ounce fuel tank. I want to have a, a clunk tank, something nice and sealed because it's going in the fuselage cabin with the electronics so I don't want it leaking. There isn't room at the front to have something external. So I want to have this around about here, close to the engine, but with these cross members like that, as if because this is as the plan, with the cross members it's going to end up too high and siphon into the engine, the, the fuel. I could get a y ounce tank which is slightly smaller by the way, but there's not a great deal in it. I, I may end up putting a one ounce tank in which, like I say, is slightly smaller, but we'll, we'll plan for this one anyway. So what I'm going to do to get that lower down is I'm going to take out this cross member, and or at least I'm going to slide it back to there or round about there so that there's room for this tank to sit in lower down than these cross members. Probably wants to go a little bit further back just so that we can wrap it in a little bit of foam to insulate it from the vibration. And also what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the, the corner off these beach engine bearers just so that it can go a little bit further forward and we've still got a little bit of foam protecting it. This in itself will create, moving this backwards will create an issue slightly later on when we come to do those triangular sections at the base of the fuselage on the underside because with the spacing, the original spacing, these are where those cross formers go and this will provide strength to the cross formers. So we'll need to deal with that and strengthen that slightly later on. But for now we're going to move that back and, uh, and, and glue it there so we can get the tank in. The ignition coil and electronics can go top and bottom of the tank and the radio gear can go back here in the cabin. I want to try and get everything as far forward of the CG or around the CG as possible because we don't want to end up with this tail heavy or, or too tail heavy so we need to try and plan for that. First thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to glue, I'm going to epoxy these engine bearers and balsa to the front sections of spruce on this crutch. I'm then going to drill through here and just put in a 5mm piece of dowel that tie all this together as shown on the plans. And then once that's done we'll come back and we'll have a quick look as we glue the whole crutch together with these cross pieces. So I've now got these two sides finished for the uh, for the crutch so we can build start to build the this central crutch the su main support of the fuselage 
together. We've got these spacers to put in and I'm going to get that glued up now. So we've got this central parallel section finished and then once I've done that I will set it up on the table and show you how I pull in the tail so that we get it nice and even coming down to a point at the end rather than being a little bit off and squiff. Right, well I've now got this parallel section of the, the crutch, the sides, glued together with these three, four uh, cross pieces and what I've done is I'm putting a weight on the front, I'm running two straight edges down the parallel sides of this cabin area and out to the back here and I've used a ruler to measure where the center point is between these two straight edges and I just drew a line here on this piece of masking tape and I now know that that is the central line down the fuselage so we need to hit that spot so I've got the rear, the rear uh, spacer or cross former it's hardly a former really it's just a piece of balsa here just setting that at the right distance I'm now going to just shape the back of this here so that these meet together a little bit more so I'll probably end up taking about half of the uh, the timber off that so like I say so they just just come together and give a bigger surface area to glue and the tip of the fuselage won't be quite as wide then I've got one two three pieces to go in let me look at the plans one two three yes that's correct these I am not doing out of the 316 balsa that I used up on the parallel section here on the plans it doesn't say it's not clear it's not shown but I don't think it needs to be as, as heavy down here so I'm using 1 8 light balsa I want to keep this tail section as light as possible so that we don't have a problem with it being tail heavy right we've now got this glued up got those cross pieces just tacked in place with a little bit of CA and what I'm going to do now is just sand this up put a little bit more CA just to make sure these joints are good well once I've got this crutch finished and I was just looking at it and looking at the plans and I had a little bit of a realization now these dowels that I put through here will ultimately tie these together and make it stronger at the front but looking at the plans you can see the dowel here and I should have left it sticking out a little bit because these also form the attachments for the elastic bands holding the wings up you know it doesn't matter how much you look at plans there's always something that you miss or you see differently and there's no indication that these dowels are for the wing bands but it's obvious they are once you realize so I mean it's an easy job just to drill that out and to put some dowels in so I'll do that at a later stage on the bench drill and um, I'll have a think about it because I mean it'd be nice to put the dowels slightly higher up near the wing at the top of the, the um, cabin but to be honest I don't think it's strong enough for that and I think in this crutch or below the crutch as shown at the back here is the ideal place but I'll have a think about that before I drill this out right we've now got this crutch finished and I'm really pleased with how it's gone such a simple design and, and easy to do and yet this is the foundation the whole foundation from which our fuselage is going to be based I can see it now those lovely diamond shapes coming down from the bottom coming in towards the tail and the same on the top giving this a really distinctive look and if we put this on these blocks we can see just hold the back there we can see the engine now fits on the front there between the engine bearers and we've got a space here for the fuel tank that just fits nicely slotted in there between those sides of the crutch and as we've moved that one cross piece back a little bit there's just enough room to pack that in foam to reduce the vibration and the level of that tank now 
if we build a little bit of a platform underneath, underneath will be ideal. Well now we've got the foundation of this fuselage finished, I'm going to draw this video to a close. And in the next video, we're going to be building up the underside of this fuselage with the triangular sections that start to form up half of that diamond, the diamond demon. And that is going to be really exciting when this suddenly starts to take shape. And I can see it now in my mind's eye and uh, I can't wait to get on with it. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. Please come back and see how we get on continuing the build of this 49 inch wingspan diamond demon.